Okay, we're going to start the backsplash today. Andre is cleaning everything down. We'll replace that. And then also replace the insides of these uh, cabinets. The terrible wall wallpaper or backsplash is there today. I don't even know what that is. Okay, this is the new tile backsplash. It's a stone, lightweight. Looks good. Took us a couple hours to put on. Gives a complete different visual on the cleaned up the sink a little bit. And then we uh, redid the cabinets here. Look pretty good. Thanks to Andrea, she busted her butt on this for two hours. So the kitchen area is actually starting to look pretty good. Okay, here is our project for today. And we have to get the propane tanks right there mounted on the front of the camper and its new newly painted bracket and shelf um, with all the new hosing. So the problem was that we had hosing going from in from the propane tanks to the trailer that looked like this and there are three of them and they were like they've been taped together or cracking or breaking all together so we had to get new all new hoses problem being I don't know what the sizes are for all the hoses so the first thing is I ordered these little pigtail inlets that go from our regulator or from the propane tanks to the regulator so when I ordered them new um, they didn't fit the old regulator and I didn't know what adapter or what I needed to do to get it to work and I didn't know what the replacement hose sizes were I couldn't find them on Amazon only because I didn't know the sizes of them so after a lot of frustration of trying to figure out you know, this pigtail issue and why I can't fit them in there and is there an adapter and no one seems to know I just ended up buying a new regulator which fits this Inlet, these inlets. So the idea is this little regulator sits between the propane tanks and these pigtails come from the propane into the sides of it and then this hose here comes from outside of the regulator to the trailer and feeds the trailer the propane. Nice thing about this new regulator that I have is it's an automatic dual changeover so when one tank is empty um, it will automatically switch to the other tank and then it has a knob there that I can turn, turn off the uh, one tank and remove it without interrupting service of the other tank. So we're going to try to put all this together tonight and get it mounted on the front of the propane uh, rack and get one more thing crossed off my list to do. Alright? Okay, so we've managed to Put our two tanks on, put the regulator, we got the inlet, uh, hoses going to the regulator, dual auto changeover, we put the new hose to the propane hose to the camper, we just turned one on, let it go through the system and we'll go inside and see if we can fire up the stove or the oven. Okay, I have not lit this yet. Uh, the previous center said it worked, so we're going to try this <laughs> and see if it works. Alright, turn one the first burner on. Actually, that's the rear. This is the first burner here. I don't know if you got to give it any time, but let's see. 
Oh, holy shit. Look at that. Look at that crap. Let's try a second one. Oh. And here we go. All right. They work. That is our new stove on full. I haven't tested the oven. I'll do that later. But it seems to be working. We have propane. The first working part in the trailer. Besides the electricity inside. Alright, see you soon. Okay, so today's project is to get our plumbing working and our water flowing into our sinks. Uh, you can see right here is our water tank. I think it's a 30 gallon maybe more I, have to, I don't remember I can't check see it comes through underneath the sink here it's underneath it's a big tank there's a full length underneath the sink and you fill it with a hose from outside there's a, a nozzle that you connect the hose up to and we had a problem because the other old pump that we had in here uh, had a crack in it and it wasn't working so it wasn't able to pressurize the the pipes. So what happens here is the water comes out. The water comes out here down this nozzle. And what I did is I added, I replaced this hose and I added this uh, cutoff valve so that if I ever had problems with the the new pump or any of the piping, I could shut off the water and not have it leak through the rest of my trailer. Uh, theoretically, it shouldn't. The water shouldn't flow without the pump running, but. If there was a problem with the pump, I needed to shut off the water. I wouldn't want to end up with a 30 gallon tank leaking all over my trailer and the pump not working. So, you can see here the water will come through here. I'll put new tubing from here to here and then connect this up. This connects to the sink and to the rest of the piping in the trailer and then wire it up. There's some simple cables here. There's an on and off switch on the other side of this panel here, which controls, turns it on and off the pump. And once the pump's on, it'll feed the sink in the kitchen, uh, the sink in the bathroom, and the uh, shower. So we'll see if we can't get that replaced and the piping run, and uh, we'll test out the water. We also have to uh, replace the gray, gray water piping on the side of the trailer so we're not leaking water all over. Okay, more on our plumbing. So we're going to the side here, going to the side here. And you can see the gray water tank and the ABS pipe. That's where all of the sink shower drains to and holds the tank until you're ready to empty it. You can see that we don't have a, a valve there. Right now, just empty out into the street or into the park. Whenever we turn on the water, we don't want to do that because the parks get very upset if you pour out soapy water or dirty water to their, into their campground. So we need to add the valve and the piping that we came up with. Um, I'm going to stick that on there, glue it on, and kind of MacGyver a new solution for us. Okay, so here's the gray water tank assembly that I'm going to try to rebuild. We have the ABS pipe that comes out of the uh, remaining pipe that's underneath the trailer. I got a MacGyvered that to go into a valve so that I could stop the water flow. It's PVC, they didn't have one for ABS. And I found this little kit, this pump. It's for a sump pump drain. But I found that I could attach in here and then I can store that in the camper so when I go to the Go to empty my gray water. I'm not just pouring it out in the ground. I can put it actually put it in the disposal system at the campgrounds. And of course, I've got the glue that I need to have for the various pieces. So we're going to put all this together. See if I can't get the gray water piping to be complete and functioning so that we don't run around with our gray water spilling out of our tank. Okay, there we go. There's our working solution. We've got it glued up. That should do it. I'm going to add a little clamp, maybe a little rubber, keep it from bouncing around, hold it up. Um, a little bit closer to the tire than I would like, but I think that'll be okay. We're not expecting any off-roading at this point. Um, 
I should be good to go. Okay, it's now time to see if our plumbing is working. We've got the new pump in. I'm going to turn it on. I fit a little bit of water in there, not a whole lot, but uh, we're going to see if this works. I'm going to turn off the valve and turn on the pump. A little switch here. You hear it? Pulling from the tank, send it through the piping. That's it. There we go. We've got water. It's a little gurgly because the tank isn't very, isn't very full and the truck is at an odd angle and it's sucking in air. But it is working. So let's go out and see if the exit valve is working. There we go. It's coming out in our gray water tank. A little MacGyvered construct. It seems to be working, and I can turn that valve off and the water will stop coming out. Alright, so the plumbing, at least the cold water, is done.